Welcome to Let's Talk Socials, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to stand out on social media and be seen as the experts that they really are. The latest updates and trends from the social media space presented by me, your social media strategist and coach. Now, let's get started. Let's Talk Socials. Hello, hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of Let's Talk Socials. I normally stick to the two episodes a month kind of thing, but last week I got invited to speak inside the Social Media Pro community, which I'll talk about in a second. And I really enjoyed the conversation that we had and I thought that it was really, really interesting and filled with lots of tips that could be interesting for you as well to hear. So I asked them if I could use this interview as a podcast episode. So that's why you're getting a bonus episode today. Let me explain to you why the social media pro community is a big deal. It's the biggest and oldest Facebook group for social media managers and they have 55,000 members. And they asked me to speak in their private community to other social media managers about how they can market themselves on social media. And as you know, service marketing is kind of my thing. So I talk to them a lot about how service marketing is different to product marketing, the kind of mistakes that I often see and some extra tips on how they can market themselves on social media so they can attract higher paying clients. This episode is not just going to be interesting for people who are social media managers, but also service providers in general, which is why I uploaded it today. So I hope you enjoy the conversation that I had with Kate, who is the founder of Social Media Pro. She had some issues that day with her audio, so she didn't have any electricity in her building, so she had to go to a cafe to record, which is why her audio unfortunately isn't always super crisp. But I hope you can understand the questions that she has asked me, and most of the conversation is me talking <laughs> anyways, so I think uh, that should be all right. I hope you enjoy the conversation that we had, and excuse my slightly sleepy voice, because this interview was recorded at 6 a.m., And I had just gotten up before that, so I might sound a little bit sleepy or not as eloquent as I might want it to. But either way, I hope you grab some valuable tips from it and enjoy the episode nonetheless. Let's dive in. So uh, when I was preparing, I really enjoyed going through Hannah's marketing materials. And it made me think that you guys um, should actually even take a look. And she does such a great of following all the best practices, um, uh, you know, the calls to action, excuse me, and the, you know, the offers and the opportunities and the pop-ups and the, and the everything, but yeah, it doesn't feel that way because she's infused a really friendly um, look and feel and tone with her language as well, so it's visuals and verbal components, and it's like, uh, you just breathe a little sigh of peace. And it's such a great feeling to convey. Um, but also for us as social media managers, we have a great case study for you guys to take a look at because I, it made me think that sometimes just using our conversational language, like you might be overthinking it and trying to write your, your call to action in like some formal copy marketing speak. And um, why, if that's not you and the brand and the message that you want to communicate, then why, why do that? So. We'll take a look at that. I just wanted to mention that up front for everybody. This is why Hannah's here to speak to us today. So hi, welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. Thanks for your, it's late for you. This is your interview. It's really early, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're a day ahead, basically, here in New Zealand. Nothing from the future. Exactly. Okay, so Hannah is a social media strategist and consultant. She supports mm -hmm. businesses in New Zealand, which is where she has experience from today, and worldwide with their social media's market with their social media marketing. She has a master's degree in business marketing and uh, four years experience, but she is not your average self-proclaimed Instagram guru who promises to turn Google results in the quickest period of time and is committed to helping new and established social media managers market themselves on social media through her podcast, which you guys should check out. It's called Let's Talk Social. Um, she has master classes and one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. You'll hear about that today. Thank you so much for being here. 
Hannah, what got you? Tell us a little bit more about yourself and what goes on a, a bio yeah. and how you got started. Yeah, basically how I got started with social media marketing was that um, after university, I started at a market research company. So they we did all kinds of um, studies for other businesses, but mainly mystery shopping. So if you haven't heard of mystery shopping before, basically what we did was companies would approach us. They would say, we want to find out how good our customer service is, how good our marketing is. And then we would send undercover people to their facilities to their stores and they would have to pretend to be real customers and evaluate this service that was my job but at some day they approached me and they were like you know you're the youngest people here in the company you're also the person with a marketing degree so why don't you manage our social media pages right <laughs> I think that probably resonates with a lot of you it's usually how a lot of us come into the job and yeah basically I just started managing their pages which was really challenging because we weren't allowed to name any companies that we worked with only once people were on our own like dashboard we would be able to name the companies so we had to be like really mysterious about what kind of companies the people would be working with so we would be like we have a luxury car uh, or automotive uh, business that you can work with and then yeah they would go inside and be like oh yeah I actually know this luxury car brand um so yeah I kind of started to manage those pages and then with that I really realized that that was what I really enjoyed doing. So I started a, a side hustle where I would manage other people's pages, uh, other businesses' pages. And that's how I kind of got into doing that. Um, and then in 2021, we moved from Belgium, where my partner is from, to New Zealand. And I was just thinking, well, I could go and look for a full-time job somewhere in marketing. Or I could just give this a try and see how it goes. So that's what I did. Um, and since 2021, I am yeah, working with businesses in New Zealand, but also all over the world. Um, and since last year, I've kind of pivoted a bit into the strategy and consulting side because I wanted to yeah, focus more on the, the strategic thinking rather than the doing. I really enjoy doing the doing as well. Um, I still manage my partner's business page. He's a physiotherapist, so I do his socials and my own, of course. Um, but for the rest, I do focus more on the strategic side of things, like how can we prepare for a launch? How can we yeah, market other service providers? That's who I focus on. And, and yeah, so I do more of that strategic thing now, um, but I still enjoy creating posts as well. And how did you decide to start a podcast for other social media managers? Yeah, the thing was, I like to talk, which is great. And I'm on here today because I get to talk for an hour to all of you. But yeah, I just thought I used to do like mini trainings on my stories on Instagram once a week, where I would kind of choose a topic that came up in the last week. And I would talk about that. But I felt very limited by that because obviously I could do like... 50 slides but then you know the chances that someone would watch all of them were pretty low so I thought a podcast could be a really good idea to kind of go into more depth on a topic and actually discuss common questions that people ask me um, in a longer format and I really enjoy doing that um, I also always transform my podcasts into blog posts so that people who don't like podcasts but still want to learn more about a topic can also enjoy it and it has been really great because I invite a lot of people onto the podcast as well so I do lots of interviews and I just really love to get others people's expertise onto the podcast as well and I learn so much myself every single time I interview someone and it has just been really great to also yeah, network and build connections with other people in the industry so I can refer people I can you know ask for advice from others and it has been yeah really really cool and it's one of my favorite parts of my business I would say I love that I love that it's really inspiring and I hope encouraging to the social media managers that are listening to if you just enjoy something to get it going that the benefit yeah will be there for you especially if it's just out of pure and enjoyment but it doesn't have to yeah. be like the perfect marketing vehicle to bring mm. new clients or whatever and yeah start a podcast and really enjoy it. I noticed you're like on episode 70 
haven't you? Sure? Yeah, I just recorded episode, I think, 79 yesterday. So wow. yeah. suddenly we're almost at 80 episodes and I can remember the first one I recorded. So yeah, it went really oh, fast. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. Well, um, everyone that's listening today um, is a part of our Social Media Pro Connect community and they hear mm -hmm. me talk a lot about what I call be your own best client, which mm -hmm. is a conundrum about how we spoke about it. So good at coming up with ideas, concepts, and strategies, plans, and tactics, and the whole thing for other people, but for ourselves, mm. it's like whole cobbler's kids have no shoes. It's either one, we have some creative or strategic or some sort of block um, versus like what you're doing, just getting out there and doing it for the sake of doing it, or mm. put our clients first, and then we have no time. Yeah. Right. And so then we don't have any time, which is why I say be your own best client and be, yeah. you know, do it first thing in the morning. Like you're the first client that you service in the morning yeah. by doing your own marketing, write that blog post, record that podcast, uh, update your website, like whatever is on your own strategic plan mm -hmm. have. So talk to me about like social media managers that you've met along the way and um, how you've helped them sort of understand this concept of marketing yeah. help versus why is it so why is it so challenging for us? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think it, it always depends on, on the person. We don't all have the same reasons why we find it difficult. But I think sometimes it's that, like you say, putting our clients first, that we know these people pay us to do the job. So, you know, you're kind of like, oh, I have to get that done and then I can focus on my own thing. But then we all know it kind of ends up at the bottom of the to-do list and we're like, oh yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. And then before you know it, you haven't posted in like three weeks and suddenly you maybe lose a client and you're like, oh, <laughs> and now my pipeline isn't filled and I don't know how to get more clients that I need. Or maybe you don't like a client anymore and you just want to, you know, fire them and find someone new. I've been in that situation before. So I think it, it often comes down to not prioritizing our business because we're not the one paying us. And obviously, to a certain extent, we are because obviously, you know, we're just working in our business as well. Um, but I think it also often comes down to being a little bit too close to our own business to see how we could market it. We It's really easy to look at someone else's business and be like, this is what's wrong. This is what needs to change. This is what we could talk about. But if you're really invested in your own business all the time because you work in it daily you kind of lose that outside perspective and it can be a bit difficult to yeah think of ideas for yourself and um yeah kind of market yourself and your business yeah you something i thought of while you were talking was um that uh it's also true since we're all around each other as social media professionals and marketing mm -hmm. professionals like when I saw your website and everything, I went like, oh, that's so, so great. And it's fresh and it's very you. And sometimes I think there's a bit of, uh, I'll dare say the insecurity where mm. we don't know our own strengths or we're afraid yeah. to sort of put them on broadcast or what's new, what's unique about us, like what's unique yeah. about me and what makes me different than other social media yeah. managers. Is that something that you help people? Take yeah, care? definitely. And I think, I think what you mentioned is also a certain expectation for us. Like we're the experts, we know what social media marketing is like. So we hold ourselves to that expectation that our social media has to be amazing. Because obviously, when people come to our pages, they need to see that we know what we're doing. So it's often I often hear that excuse that people say, "Yeah, but you know, I don't have time because I'm focusing on my clients and." that is what's important sure that is important but at the same time like I said before if you're suddenly out of clients because that can happen then your pipeline isn't filled and then you have a big problem so I think it comes with that expectation that we our socials need to be perfect and we need to know every single feature we need to use all of them we need to go live we need to do stories we need to do carousels and we need to showcase how good we are and that sometimes feels uncomfortable to do that because it's easier to just focus on clients and not kind of go out of your comfort zone and like you said show what makes you different from other social media managers and what makes you stand out and 
I think that comes with time and it also comes with building that confidence and showing other people that that you know what you're doing and that people should come and work with you. Yeah, there's um, two things that you said that I want to highlight. Um, one is you pointed out like the, first of all, um, focusing on clients instead of ourselves, like sort of saying it with um, a bit of like martyrdom or something to it, or like that, that yeah. that's better. Those, those client um, wins that you're getting, those are the things you're going to turn around and share on yeah. your own um, social media. So it's almost like, you don't have to, you know, do double, double work. And by yeah. the way, it, it doesn't have to be what you think either. I have spent 15 years not talking about social media marketing, <laughs> on social media. I guess my, uh, my life is just an interesting soap opera enough that yeah. people follow me, but I still get my clients all from referral word of mouth and, and my social mm -hmm. media marketing. So it can be a bit unconventional, you know, as well, and or take those clients that you focused so much on and kind of harvest the work that yeah. you put in to, to market yourself, don't you think? Yeah, totally. And I think it, it depends a bit on first the, the kind of business model that you have set up. Some people do strictly social media management, some others do coaching as well, or you might have like an online course or something else that you can sell on your socials that isn't necessarily social media management because sometimes we're in a situation that we're completely fully booked and we cannot take on any more clients but we can still generate income in a different way like we can sell I don't know coaching sessions or online courses or maybe you have like um, I don't know digital products like templates or stuff like that so that is something that you can promote as well if you feel more comfortable doing that than you know promoting yourself and like you're done for you services um but I also think it, it can also be a portfolio kind of thing. So if you don't want to focus so much on like your life, which would be another way of doing it, like showing your day-to-day -day life and not necessarily focusing so much on, ah, oh, this is the results that I got for my client, but just showing what your life is like as a social media manager, which I think would work really well on a platform like TikTok, for example. Um, you could do that, or you could just have it as some sort of portfolio, like you say, where you kind of show the result and, don't have to do the double work you just you know work on your clients and then the results that you get put that on your socials and show that you know what you're doing um the other thing you pointed out was the you mentioned like the feast or famine cycle right where we yeah. get so busy that we stop working on our own marketing and mm -hmm. then we lose a client or something inevitably happens and so the more consistent that you can be with your own marketing you know, I have students that will be so excited because they reached a milestone revenue mm -hmm. goal in their business and I'll sell, we'll be celebrating, which is always amazing when you reach your goal. But what's next is, cry over here, um, what's <laughs> next is to make it predictable, right? To make mm -hmm. it predictable and recurring because without the system in place to, cons like we're talking about, consistently, mm -hmm bring you new prospects, consistently be talking on the phone to new potential clients, um, then you're sort of at the effect of what does or doesn't come your way versus having a proactive strategy where you're constantly speaking. And a podcast is a great mm -hmm. way to force yourself sort of into a structure or a system to do that mm -hmm. where you have a, an episode coming out every week, then you are in a system of creating content to yeah. put out every week. So I appreciate that you pointed out that that as well, because it is that consistency and that regularity that we're all striving um, towards mm -hmm. some predictable growth. I know at least when I was married, that's what my partner was looking, my husband was looking for at the time was like, okay, cute, you have this <laughs> business. Um, how do we know if you're going to, you know, how much money you're going to be making next month? Mm. Yeah, for sure. And I think for me, like when you mentioned the podcast, that is one of the things that I really like because I have this long form content that I can turn into like hundreds if I wanted to smaller pieces of content. So I have this podcast and I do that during my week. I record with other people, but then I take that work that I have done and I put that on my social. So I will always put up a, like a video snippet of the episode. I'll put some on my stories. I might turn it into a carousel post. So 
the repurposing that is going on with that one long form content uh, piece is really, really great. And that helps me to have a sort of a routine because the podcast comes out. So I know, okay, on Thursdays, I'm going to do a snippet from the podcast. So that kind of helps me to keep consistent and keep going. And it also provides a bit of um, regularity to my followers because they know, okay, yeah, there will be some snippets and I don't have to check in on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Is there a new podcast? They know I will be talking about it on stories and on, on my feed. So they know, yep, okay, now I can go and listen to a new one. And I think that helps as well with um, engaging your followers. You, we men you mentioned um, in um, in our pre when our, in our prep work the difference between service marketing and mm -hmm. product marketing. Can you talk a little bit about that and why it's more difficult? Yeah. So when I went to university, that was actually what I studied. So we had a specialization in our bachelor that was called digital and service marketing. And initially, I was like, well, like, isn't it all the same? Like, isn't marketing always marketing. But actually through this course that we took, we learned that there's actually a different approach needed for marketing a service versus marketing a product. And that comes down to the unique challenges and characteristics that services have. And there are six of them. I can go into them now or we'll see where we end up. But basically services are intangible. So unlike a product, you cannot touch a service or you cannot feel a service so it's really difficult to convey or communicate what the service is right because you cannot necessarily show what the service is and I think especially for social media managers you'll see the final outcome the social media post but it's sometimes not so easy to grasp what the person is actually doing behind the scenes so if you compare it as well to like think of a, a bottle of shampoo that you buy at a store that's something that you can touch, but the service that a hairdresser is doing is not something that you can grasp until you actually experience it. So that means you also don't have any cool products to hold into the camera, which obviously makes it more difficult for us because what will we be showing in our marketing? And that obviously is why video is so important for service-based businesses, because it can give us a way to show what we're actually doing, which is much more difficult in like a photo post or a carousel post. Um, you can also not own a service. So when you purchase a product, you obviously have it, like you own it. But a service, um, yeah, it's not something that we can actually have in our hands. So if you think of when you buy a flight, yes, you will get that physical paper ticket, but it's not that that you buy. You actually buy a value proposition that the airline is going to, you know, transport you to your destination. So that is another characteristic of services. They're also perishable, so we cannot stockpile them somewhere or save them for later. So for you as a social media manager, if you have a meeting with a client and they don't show up, that is an hour that you cannot bill anywhere else. So that means, like you said before, we need to have kind of a consistent and um, yeah, con consistent lead of new clients and like that client flow. Services are also co-created. So that means that your client is unfortunately sometimes also part of the service experience and they shape the service delivery. So if your client doesn't show up on time to your meeting or if they don't send you enough materials, which we all know happens sometimes, <laughs> unfortunately, um, then that will impact your delivery. So you are not the only person that impacts how a service is delivered. Services are also always different. If you batch produce products, they will all be more or less the same, I would hope so. But services depend on a lot of things that we cannot control, for example, our clients, but also things like the internet connection or with you today, if you cannot work at your office or at, at home, then that will impact your delivery. And that is something that we cannot always influence ourselves. And, and lastly, like obviously, algorithm. yeah, or like the algorithm, exactly. And so measuring the ROI of a service can also be harder, of, of course, because the effect or like a result is not always instantly visible, um, which means that Investing in a service can be harder for clients because it's harder for them to see their return on investment. So all of these six characteristics, they increase the perceived risk for a client who wants to like, engage a specific service. So that is why our marketing needs to focus much more on reducing that perceived risk 
for the potential client, then we would have to with a product because it's simply yeah a higher perceived risk and it might necessarily also be a higher investment for a client rather than you know purchasing one thing so that's why um, yeah service marketing is just inherently different to marketing product i have talked about some of those things but mm-hmm. i've never really like heard the six things that <laughs> marketing yeah. put together as a package that mm-hmm. was for valuable um and all very very true um i was even talking the other night to our platinum group which is a smaller um group about how some people have like even consulting insurance right because mm-hmm. even when we give like our best advice uh and our contracts like have language around mm-hmm. facebook and instagram like shadow banning or shutting down mm-hmm. their of course i'm going to follow all the rules that i know follow but um, the likelihood or the possibility that they could get shut down but then even if I follow every best practice I've ever followed and and then some the I I can show the probability of an outcome but I cannot yep. promise an outcome for sure so I yeah. really really think okay. breaking it down that's actually something I'm going to and listen to <laughs> uh, talk to me about some of the mistakes that social media managers make when they start I think there's so many different ones and it always depends a bit on the the business model and like how you market yourself. But I would probably say that like the top three that I see all the time with people would be focusing too much on educational content. And with educational content, I mean the kind of posts that are like three tips to get more followers or why you should be using social media for your business or like how to schedule an Instagram post. So that kind of educational content. And the reason for that is that um, apart from being a little boring, and we all know that boring doesn't really do well on social media anymore, there's no actual value in these posts because everyone can Google that kind of stuff. If you put up a post that is like how to schedule an Instagram post, that is something that someone can just type into Google and they'll get step-by-step instructions. So it's not really something that you need to talk about. Like if you want to make educational content, which you should, because that also helps you, you know, like position yourself as an expert to a certain extent, draw it from your own experience, like draw it from the problems that you solve for your clients every single day, because, um, that is going to help you to position yourself more as an expert than just kind of regurgitating content that is already on Google or on blog posts somewhere else. It's really true. Like, like I said at the beginning of this about the Facebook API, of course, I did mm-hmm. go to YouTube and I found somebody and thankfully they put it up yeah. there. Just so everybody knows, I'm back from the day where I used to be the first person that was like our yeah. do the tutorial to show the changes because you got all the beauty. Mm-hmm. But the real value for most people comes from telling the story about their clients, explaining mm-hmm. how they thought about solving the problem, and then showing how they went about the implementation and revealing the results mm-hmm. of that versus saying, like, here's how you, you know, use XYZ tool. It's like, here's how XYZ, using XYZ, why I chose to use XYZ tool yeah. in, cer- in a certain thing. So I, I agree that... Um, just jumping to post content like educational content that's in the form of like an infographic or a short or something Mm -hmm. while some of it is useful to me it's more like filler type content what's more interesting is if you use that tool or you use that strategy and you can tell me a story about it then I'm I'm interested in hearing behind the scenes other people's brains how do they work because I can use it later and your clients do too Mm. I mean, I think what you mentioned, like with a YouTube video, for example, that can be part of your strategy, like to attract um, that kind of traffic, maybe, especially if you have something like an online course or if you have templates, stuff like that. It's important for other people to find you somewhere. So that can be an entry point for people to discover you. So I think it can be part of a strategy, but you also risk attracting people who are at the very basic level of understanding when it comes to social media. So those people tend to be the kind of, you know, like painful clients that don't value your expertise because 
they are just at that basic level and they don't really understand how it works. So then you risk having them come back to you. And what we talked about before with the ROI, they're like, oh, but I don't see any results because they don't get how it works. So if you focus too much on that kind of educational and like more superficial knowledge kind of stuff, you, yeah, you actually attract a different type of client as well. Because I think in the end, when um, you post this kind of content, you also don't position yourself as the expert and people don't recognize you as the expert because they see similar posts anywhere else. And it's really easy to replicate that kind of content. So then you also, again, run the risk that people are just going to you know, knock off your content and post it somewhere else. So you, you're not really making unique content. And again, that's obviously particularly relevant if you want to attract more higher paying clients the kind of clients that just pay the invoice that go yep perfect that's fine thank you so much for helping me and that leave you to do your work and aren't really a pain every single day of your existence what are some other mistakes that you see yeah um i think what we talked about before the like just not marketing yourself enough so don't not talking about your own offer either at all or not enough i know like this is really obvious when we say it because this is something that we talk to our clients about all the time we say you know like you have to talk about your offer all the time but it's really something that i see almost in every like client audit that i do because i find as a as a business owner as a social media marketer we have a really clear idea of what we do the kind of results that we can deliver the work that we do but it's really hard to you know put that into content and deliver it for ourselves rather than for clients um, so yeah it really often happens that people will put up posts and this would be my third mistake i guess um is you talk about your services at the same time like all this all the time you talk about it in the same way you put up a post it's like hey i have two spots for social media it's management like available yeah exactly repetitive and very basic like you put it on your stories hey like send me a message if you're interested in social media management and you just kind of rinse and repeat that over and over again and we always have to remember that marketing the challenge about marketing is that we talk about the same thing in different ways over and over again and that is what you should be doing with your social media management services as well you need to Put on your creative head and think of different ways that you can showcase what you do and kind of draw in clients like that instead of saying, hey, send me a message if you're interested. Which is why something like a podcast is a great idea yeah. because it's getting you to talk about it from a lot of different ways versus, you know, if you're just doing a promotional post, say I have a window for two clients. Yeah. And by the way, if you always have a window for two clients, then we know you're not <laughs> um, so interesting somebody invited me to come speak recently and I was interested in going to speak to this group of people about personal branding and how to use social yeah. media and they didn't have an organic social media person to come mm. do that uh, but as it turned out it was more of a mastermind of sorts and so mm -hmm. the idea yeah. is just everybody like I would have the opportunity to take on clients and I was like well i don't want any clients and she's like no one's yeah. ever said that to me before <laughs> no clients right now I'm referring every client yeah. that I get yes that's a great reason for people that are oh, well you guys are listening here to my program <laughs> if I'm referring I'm on referring streak right now but um you want to be you want to be filled up even if you're not filled up you want to be filled up every once in a while yeah. you know so um, those are three great um, mistakes that people make. Of course, none worse than not posting on social. Mm, um, yeah, totally. And I think, like I, like I said before, it always depends a bit on your business model as well. Maybe your business model is I am full for done for you service clients. So I'm just going to focus on educating other people and selling an online course. Like in that case, then you would do more educational type of content for example but I just find in general that people often yeah go down that street of let me just make the educational content because then people will see that that I know what I'm doing but you can do that in different ways like you can voice I want to say slightly controversial opinions or you might want to say look this is actually not what you should be doing or you know like calling out bad practices in the industry all these kind of things help you to establish yourself as an expert more than just that superficial 
educational kind of content. So if we avoid these mistakes, what are some other things that we can do? And I know we've mentioned a lot of golden nuggets along the way, but what are some other things that we can do to market ourselves better? Online. Yeah, I mean, that is always the question, right? Like, how can I get more clients uh, apart from from your case right now, <laughs> when you say, no, I don't want to have any more clients. But, but usually when I talk to service providers, that is the question, like, how can I get more clients or potentially also more higher quality clients because you might be good at attracting everyone like the really small tiny businesses to I don't know what kind of business but um, the thing is like you want to have those high quality clients like we said before that aren't really a pain and that really you know value your expertise so I would say um, remembering what I talked about before with the reducing the perceived risk for a potential client I think one of the the most important things that we can do is build relationships and like building that trust with people because that's what it comes down to right like we want to be really interested in our potential clients and um, remember to be social on social media because I think we often forget that there is a reason why social media is called social like we we get caught up in following the little hacks and tips that the Instagram gurus post about and like all these little strategies that we can use that we forget to actually make connections with people. Um, so I would say if yeah, you want to start building more relationships, start using um, your stories more, try to start conversations with people because that is how you're going to end up with those more high quality clients. And often you can also, by having these conversations already, see if there is a good fit between you and this other person and you might avoid um, some uh, clients that yeah had really bright red flags beforehand that you didn't see. So I would say stories are definitely my main strategy that I use to get to start a conversation with people because it's just so easy to get someone into your DMs when they reply to a story or if you want to take the proactive approach reply to someone else's stories especially if you're working uh, with brands that already have an, an established social media presence like whether that is a product-based business or a service-based business they will have a social media page that you can interact with so you know reply to a story that might not necessarily have to be like a promotional story it can be anything, you know, just look through your stories and you're like, oh, this is cool. Like I'm going to actually send something instead of just thinking my reaction to myself. And that's how you easily slide into people's DMs and then you can just start having conversations. And the other way around, if someone replies to your story, don't just do the double tap heart and like finish off the conversation, but actually reply something back. And that's sometimes a little bit Guilty. awkward to get into. Yes, yeah, so you're just like, I'm terrible. I actually, on Sundays, I took up my messages. So I reply to all my texts and all my WhatsApps and all my Facebook DMs and all my Instagram DMs. And I watch all my friends' reels that they've sent me on TikTok. So that's Sunday. And I always think it's so horrible. It's so, it's so sad. I mean, um, at I, least, I, at least I yeah, like, I personally just like to take like 15 minutes a day where I kind of engage on purpose. So I will just, um, yeah, make sure that I say something back, even if it's just like, haha, uh, can you relate or something, you know, like just yeah. start a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like just, it doesn't have to be an immediate sales pitch. Like you don't have to be like, Hey, like what is your biggest social media struggle? Because that's not really how people communicate with each other. So just start, to have normal conversations because if I think about the people who book in with me there's rarely ever anyone who just books in with me before we actually had the conversation so I know that for me having these chats with people that are not about social media marketing at all are really really effective and that that actually brings me clients in the end so yeah I would say making the time to build these genuine connections and genuine relationships is really um, what is going to help you get these higher paying high quality clients do you um you said no one most people chat with you um mm -hmm. before do you um and you also mentioned that you'd spend about 15 minutes a day doing like mm -hmm. proactive engagement my question is like where's the line between like hannah's hanging out on social media and hannah the social media manager is proactive mm -hmm. thanks for you 
that's a good question. I think the lines get very blurry throughout the day when I'm just like mm. scrolling, you know, to relax a little bit. And like when I'm actually working, but I try to actually set myself a timer in the morning where I have 15 minutes and then I will actually be a bit more strategic about who I interact with. And I will be like, oh, this person I know, we had a conversation before. And this is not supposed to be uh, like a sneaky or like a, you know, mm, way of, like an icky way of, of approaching sales. But it's just about recognizing who might be in need of your service and kind of just shoulder tapping them in a way and be like, hey, I'm here. Like, you know, let's have a conversation and see how we could help each other, how we could work with each other. Um, so I think I... I do try to make an effort to be a bit more conscious about who I engage with in those 15 minutes. Whereas if I then later on in the day check in again, I will just be like replying or, you know, just see what's what's going on. But yeah, it's sometimes difficult to to make that specific time and not just do it throughout the day while I'm waiting somewhere or doing something else. It's um, yeah, that's a, a work in progress, definitely. For sure, for sure. Well, Hannah, I've loved having you on today. You've shared a Thank lot you. of tips and actionable things we can do, plus the six things that make service marketing mm -hmm. unique. Marketing is just really, really awesome. Those are like going back to use my notes and write them down. Um, I'd love for people if they want to have um, you guys that I'm telling you, especially those of you that have been with me forever, and I keep telling you mm -hmm. to work on your own strategy, you know, as part of the be your own best client. One thing that you can do just like when people go to the gym uh, and they hire a trainer because they're more likely to go if they have someone helping them, you might consider working with Hannah to relook at your social media strategy and put a plan in place that she can help you follow. So Hannah, tell them how they can tune in with you, your website and your podcast for yeah. yours. Yeah, I would love to help more social media managers get those really cool clients that we actually really enjoy working with. And that always, like we said before, comes down to how you present yourself, how you market yourself, who you get in touch with. So um, getting in touch with me, easiest way is probably to hang out with me on Instagram. I put my Instagram handle in my name here as well. Um, so you can find me otherwise on my website if you just want to have a look at what I'm doing there. Or of course, the podcast is called Let's Talk Socials. I publish episodes every two weeks so there's lots of episodes to already go through we're almost at episode 80 now so yeah if you want to deep dive into that um, I have lots of social media topics but we sometimes also go a little bit broader into digital marketing in general and we have um, yeah lots of different perspectives on social media marketing that could be interesting for you if you don't want to go on and work with me one-on-one -on -one. there's still lots of knowledge on there as well that you can grab and consume Amazing. Yes. First person I've ever seen also put their handle on their <laughs> right away. We are, we got it going on. So you guys, um, Hannah, thank you so much for being with us today. I'd love yeah. to have you back in the future as well to share more tips. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for joining us.